Hello and welcome to Summoner Part 34 and in this part we'll be starting the Langshang Forest. One of the, I would say, longest and uh, more complex dungeons in the game. And I say complex, I mean, you can see on the screen here I've like nine different locations to get to to complete all these side quests. Thousands of years ago, before the first emperor, Liangshan was a tiny village on the River of Swords. In the year of East the Red of Morgor, Cullet, a monster rose up from the river, and the village prayed to the heavens for help. A dragon named Dai heard the prayers of Liangshan. For three days and nights, he battled the river monster. As each drop of the monster's blood struck the earth, it grew into a tree, twisted and malignant. And this is how the forest of Liangshan came to be. At last, the dragon was victorious, and the monster lay dead by the River of Swords. The people of Liangshan abandoned their village to the evil forest and built a shrine to the dragon Dai in honor of his victory. To this very day, the shrine remains a sanctuary of virtue in these dark woods. Hmm, I was thinking the battle between a dragon and a demon probably f it probably does refer to like the dragons and demons in this game. But anyway, here we have the forest. Like I said, for very long, and it does have a quite annoying gimmick to it. But here we are, we are once again greeted by the female Oni. Which honestly, uh, they have no specific weakness. But uh, yeah, so there's not really much advice I can give you. Now, in terms of summons here, I choose to go for the Blue Imp. And honestly, I do, you do see the Celestial Samurai later on, because I wanted to show him off as well. But, uh, see, the thing is, in this uh, forest, you are better off having the Blue Imp, because of his healing abilities. And you'll see exactly what I mean by that later on. Uh, yep, so speaking of this uh, forest, I do kind of like it as an idea because it's a very gloomy place. Uh, it's a, essentially, it's a forest spawned by demon blood. Yeah, can't really get much uh, grimmer than that. An item they leave is the spogged mace. Um, okay, I guess. Yeah, so this this part seems to imply that blunt weapons will be effective against these guys, and they're not ineffective. It's just any weapons as good as any, I suppose. And speaking of which, I've been talking about this game how it is best to use blunt weapons. Yeah, I guess if I ever have the time, I'll do a run of this game. Well, you know, for myself, <laughs> not not a second playthrough, but I'll do a run through of this game with axe weapons. Just to see how it plays out. Success. Now, uh, of course, the only they're based off uh, sort of far eastern demons. And something I didn't know, like uh, for example, in Pokemon, uh, some Pokemon like it, oh, I'll get back to that. But in this camp here, we see the left arm of Goldie the second, and yeah, that's part of the the statue of Goldie side quest. But anyway, like I was saying, when it comes to Pokemon, uh, Pokemon like Magmar and Electrobuzz, I didn't know this, but apparently they're based off, they're sort of based off the Oni, these sort of uh, Far Eastern demons, uh, which which makes a lot more sense when you think about it. Because when I first saw Electrobuzz and Magmar, I was like, what are they based off? They just look a bit odd. But uh, but I guess even when I was younger, I thought, oh, it must be a Japanese thing. Because uh, despite Forky's best efforts, yeah, I worked out Pokemon was Japanese. Mm. You know, I was thinking of these Oni here, and they kind of look—they kind of look, look like insects. Oh, this item here, the Talk of Bashing, uh, gives a plus two to blunt weapons. So actually, that 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 can be slightly useful. But uh, the, these aren't because of the graphics of the game. They kind of kind of look insectoid, but when you see them close up, they're actually made up of like muscles. If you get what I mean. We 
talk to this uh, wounded soldier here, who kind of looks like a green power ranger. And he sort of explains how bad this forest is. And, you know, you know this, uh, this forest does seem bad. You know, I, if, if, this, if people wanted to cut down this forest, I don't... You know, even Sting wouldn't complain about it, I don't think. I do a lot of the character. It's uh, I like saying that we've been to some pretty scary uh, dungeons in this game. So, you know, this spooky forest. You know, it's still spooky, but uh, you know, we've been in the volcano, people. Yep, and I wanted to show off the gimmick of this uh, dungeon. Thank you very much. It's this green, this green. Yep, apparently it's Joker gas, but. Uh, <laughs> But uh, no, yeah, it will poison you, and it's a poison you can't cure yourself. So yeah, you have to go through this dungeon entirely poisoned. Thanks, game. Now I've read a few FAQs, and it is they, they do say it is possible to go through that cloud without getting poisoned, and it's something along the lines of you travel by yourselves one at a one at a time, and sort of sneak by the edge. But uh, yeah, I didn't want to. I didn't want to take forever doing that, and I thought, uh, yeah, forget it. I'll just uh, go with it. And before I mentioned that that the uh, blue imp has healing abilities, and yeah, that's probably why he's best used for this dungeon. Hmm. Well, oh, what a shame is that ooh, boots of stealth, sneak plus two. Oh, okay, I would guess. Okay, I'm just gonna sell them anyway. But uh, and what to show about enemy AI is that there's a healing move which you've just saw called Vitalize, and that heals your entire party. Not completely, but you know what I mean. But the thing is, your enemy, your ally AI won't do that by themselves. They'll only cast basic heal. Uh, so when you're battling through this uh, dungeon, yeah, that's something you'll have to put up with. Uh, now at this point uh, we have Joseph, the Imp, and Rosalind who have healing abilities. And if you've been leveling up, leveling up your car at this point, he should have healing abilities too. So I like that. He really, I swear, your car really becomes useful in the later part of the game. Now here, now here we have the Omni Mage, which kind of look reminiscent of Monotons, the big hulking beasts with horns. And you know that's something very common about mythology. That uh, lots of scary demons or creatures have horns and sharp teeth, which I do kind of get, obviously, because predators like lions and, and tigers and bears are my. They they do have sharp teeth, but not obviously as a human being, that's something we're instinct instinctively scared of. The horns, however, I'm not sure where they come from. Like, yeah, you know, I get it. We're scared of carnivores, but are we, you know, are human beings fundamentally scared of bulls or something? Well, I also think I will give the AI credit for is that uh, Rosaline does cast like these freeze spells, so uh, that's appreciated. Hmm. Now I must say that the whole uh, theme of this dungeon is very foreboding. Uh, again, the whole theme of death and poison, but also the music. There, there, there's very little music. It's very ambient. It's very slow and foreboding. I think it's obvious we're in some kind of a haunted forest. Hey, look! It's the elephant's graveyard. But uh, ooh, I forgot this is the this is the area we, we must never go. Everything you see is your kingdom. What's that place, Father? It's the Langshan Forest. You must never go there. But uh, oh, speaking of which, they did mention a fight between a dragon and a demon. So 
Are these bones meant to be the remnants of those creatures? Probably. <laughs> and uh, speaking of a fight between a dragon and a demon, like they said in the intro, it is established that one of the demons does actually want to take revenge on Alrenia. So I can only presume it's sort of linked to this somehow. Of course, I make use of uh, Felice's backstab ability. Hmm. You know, it's a shame I didn't level up her backstab more, or or even her sword uh, abilities more, because yeah, I'm pretty sure she should be able to take down a lot of enemies with one hit. Yeah, this definitely looks like the bones of a dragon. If you go down to the woods today, you're in for a big surprise. Police will sneak up behind you and stab you. Da 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 dies. And so on and so forth. I'm not the best at ad libbing. Uh, now, in terms of themes, uh, this isn't the first time we've been in, in a forest, sort of. Like the other time I can think of is in, in, in yeah, is in of course Mediva with their random encounters. But actually, that is a good question, Rosalind. What is this place? It's like some sort of some sort of Stonehenge. No one knows who who they were or where they came from. <laughs> <laughs> that, was a, that was a terrible reference to Spinal Tap. A lot of the thingies actually have a British accent, so <laughs> I was doing a, I was doing an impression of an American doing a, an impression of a British accent. But uh, there you go. Now you see me here abusing Felice's backstab ability, but. Uh, yeah, again, I think Jakar overtakes her in the useful department because, well, you'll see what I mean. But uh, I'll find that later on, for some reason, he does his attacks do a lot of damage, and I think that's because I've leveled up his critical hit ability. Well, maybe he's just, you know, his attack is just, you know, after a certain point, it goes up and up really high. Because that sometimes happens in RPGs. You know, they sort of grow fast at the beginning, then they sort of grow slow in the middle. And once they're near the, the top tier, they grow really powerful. But, uh, you yeah, know, that's the point of RPGs. To ascend from being human to being positively godlike. Kind of like in Dragon Ball Z, I suppose. Except, except well, except I don't think any of these guys will blow up a plane or anything. And here we see the remnants of a village. And again, there's lots of ruins in this whole area. You know, in a thousand years' time, archaeologists are going to have a great time. Oh, look, it's the ruins of a Kamos swamp. It's the ruins of the sewer. It's the ruins of Wolong Cavern. And I love the enemy AI, 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 AI here. But anyway, round the uh, back of the house here, we should find a very, very useful item. Oh, here it is. You could, you could so easily miss this, but it is worth looking for. The spine splitter. Fifty-five damage, but also look at that. Plus three for backstab. So useful, especially for fleas, because it's like y you only have to level up her backstab ability to seven, and this will max it out automatically. Now, if your stats go, go above 10, you know, in this case, all the way up to 11, to reference Spinal Tap again, I'm not sure if he does extra damage, or, you know, or, or if the damage is capped at 10. But anyway, we take a look at Fleece, and yep, yeah, backstab. It's all the way up to 11. 